What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Shark Bites. So I know that quite a few of you are big fans of killer whales and you've wanted me to try and include them in a Shark Bites video for a little while now. But this is Shark Bites, right? So I've been trying to figure out a way of including killer whales in an episode but still have it be relevant to sharks. And then out of the blue, this brand new research just fell into my lap. How fortunate. It was in the news back during the summer and involves a pod of killer whales that takes down a great white shark. So make sure you stick around because during this episode you're going to see some pretty epic aerial footage of this predation event taking place. Now it's long been thought that killer whales have been responsible for the disappearance of great white sharks in South African waters but it's never been fully confirmed. There's a number of areas in South Africa, namely False Bay and Gansby, where 10 years ago white sharks were seen in big big numbers. These are areas where at the time white shark ecotourism was absolutely booming and providing some real economic benefit to the country. But towards 2017, the numbers of white sharks in these areas began to steeply decline. And everyone was really, really confused as to why this was happening. Some people were pointing towards illegal fishing or over-exploitation of fisheries as the main culprit, but it wasn't until white shark carcasses started washing up on beaches in the area that scientists posed a different hypothesis. In 2017, coinciding with the massively steep declines in white shark numbers in the area, scientists Scientists examined four carcasses of white sharks that had washed up on beaches in the surrounding areas. So sharks do occasionally end up on beaches, this isn't a rarity, but to have four white sharks wash up on beaches in a very short space of time, this is definitely a rare thing to happen. And the even more peculiar thing is that all of these white sharks had one thing in common. Their underside or ventral side was basically mutilated and all of them were missing their livers. Shark livers are used by sharks to control their buoyancy as unlike other fish species, they don't have a swim bladder. This means that the liver is incredibly fatty in order to provide that buoyancy, but because it's so fatty, it means it's incredibly high in calories and is really nutritious for a predator. Coincidentally, also in 2017, there was an unusual spike in killer whale sightings from tourism operators, just as the white shark decline was starting to be noticed. And this is where the scientists started to pose the question, could the killer whales be responsible for these attacks on white sharks? And did those attacks by killer whales result in the sharks fleeing the area? For a while, scientists posed this hypothesis but couldn't outright prove it because they hadn't captured it on film. And between 2017 and 2022, white shark numbers fluctuated in those areas, so it was difficult to pin it entirely on killer whales. That was until now. On the 16th of May 2022, footage was captured from two different sources of killer whales predating on and eventually eating white sharks. The two video sources came from a hobbyist drone flyer and a helicopter pilot that happened to be flying over the area and spotted the killer whales and decided to film them on his phone. Are there any laws about being on your phone while flying a helicopter? <laughs> Anyway, those two videos were captured and Alison Towner and her team of shark scientists were able to gain some incredible insights into this behavior. So up first, I'm gonna show you the footage captured by the helicopter pilot. So in this footage, you can see the killer whale slowly approaching the white shark from the side, but instead of trying to swim away or swim deeper, the white shark employs a different tactic. You can see it swimming in tight circles really close to that killer whale, banking its back and dorsal fin towards that individual that's trying to beat it. I think what appears to be going on here is the white shark knows that it's in trouble and by banking its back, it's protecting that vulnerable belly area from being bitten by the killer whale as that's where they tend to target to get that liver out. The gut area is often targeted by predators on their prey as it's softer and easier to get into. And then with that tight circling, the white shark looks like it's almost deploying a tactic that seals would use against white sharks. By being smaller and more maneuverable, they can keep tight to the predator and try and evade bites. It's a similar tactic that's also used by sea turtles when they're trying to avoid predation from tiger sharks. You can actually see that documented really well in the latest viral videos episode I did here on Shark Bites. So either click that link in the top right hand corner there or wait until the end screen and you can watch it after this video. I think the fact that it's trying to employ a tactic used by a species that it preys on is absolutely wild. It's almost as if they know how sometimes a seal gets away and it usually gets away by doing that tight circling. So they've decided to use that tactic in this situation. The issue here though is that unlike white sharks, killer whales are social group hunters, which means that there's going to be multiple of them on this hunt. And that means that the evasive circling tactic, unfortunately, isn't going to work. So the helicopter pilot didn't actually manage to capture any footage of those killer whales taking down that particular white shark. 
But fortunately for us, on the very same day, the drone operator did manage to capture this happening on film. So in this second piece of footage, we can actually see the killer whales taking down this particular white shark. I think interestingly, what we can see here is the killer whale pushing the white shark up towards the surface of the water and trying to roll it over. You can see there the orca using its nose to roll that shark over. And what I imagine it's doing is putting that shark into tonic immobility, which is that trance-like state that sharks find themselves in when they're upside down. The killer whale then bites down on the white shark and you can see that plume of blood coming out there really nicely. And that's exactly where the previous lacerations were discovered on those stranded white sharks back in 2017. That's the orca biting in the location where the liver's found to try and remove it and get that awesome nutritional benefit. How cool is that? So not only did they manage to capture that previous footage, they also got this picture here, which is believed to be a killer whale known as Starboard, identifiable by his bent dorsal fin. Here we can see Starboard the killer whale swimming next to what is thought to be a white shark liver. So it's clear that the liver of white sharks is positively buoyant and floats to the surface. So the scientists think that once the killer whale opens that ventral cavity of the white sharks at depth, the liver then floats to the surface where another killer whale can consume it. I mean, all of that combined there, we have gained some amazing insights into exactly exactly how that predation event goes down. But the cool stuff doesn't stop there. Alison and her team of scientists now had confirmed footage of killer whales taking down white sharks on a specific date and at a specific time. So it meant they could have a look at white shark numbers after this time and date to see whether it stayed the same, increased or decreased. What's really interesting though, is that Alison and her team were told that about four minutes before this predation event took place, Beach observers and other shark scientists spotted great white sharks fleeing the area in multiple directions. Some of them ended up in water less than two meters deep, just trying to flee from this scene. And then in the days after the predation event, the scientists were able to look at two different data sources on white shark numbers in the area, which were drone flight footage and shark dive tourism operators. So the first graph you can see here is showing the drone flight data, and you can see the number of sharks seen per flight on the left there, and then the distance flown by the drone via the little circles and lines, and then the dates along the bottom. And clear as day there, you can see the drones were spotting a decent number of sharks per flight, probably around five or so if you averaged it out, right up until the 16th of May, 2022, which was the date of the killer whale predation. Then after that predation event there, you can see the day after there was one shark spotted and pretty much for several weeks after that event, they barely saw any white sharks. You could possibly say from that graph that they weren't flying as much as they were before the predation event, which is absolutely true. But then we compare it with this next graph here, which is the data from the white shark tour operators. And again, we can see a very similar trend. The tour operators were seeing probably an average of again about four or five sharks per trip right up until the predation event there with that red bar and then bang no sharks until the 1st of July 2022 and that's maintaining a fairly consistent average of trips per day. So I think when you combine those two data sets it's pretty obvious that the killer whale predation event caused white sharks to flee the area for several weeks and in this area which is Mossel Bay white sharks are pretty much present all year round so their disappearance supports the hypothesis that white sharks are displaying a flight response as a result of killer whales which in turn also probably confirms the hypothesis the scientists had back in 2017 when the shark disappeared from Gansby and False Bay. Don't you just love science? <laughs> I think it's also interesting to pose the question though, how the white sharks knew it was time to flee after this predation event. This isn't mentioned in the paper, by the way, but I think it's potentially two ways. The first is that perhaps the white sharks can sense killer whales entering an area and knowing them to be predators of white sharks, they know it's time to get the hell out of there. Or even more interestingly, it could be that white sharks could smell the blood of a member of their own species, recognize that as danger and know that it's time to flee, which would potentially make white shark blood a a known deterrent for white sharks. I don't know of any papers that have looked into this scientifically yet, so at the moment that's just conjecture, but It'd be interesting if it was true. Alison and her team did have some thoughts on the potential population consequences of killer whale predation on white sharks though. They've suggested that if cultural transmission of knowledge is occurring between adult killer whales, this could have wide ranging impacts on the sharks. If adult orcas are passing on the knowledge of how to kill white sharks to other adult orcas, we might start to see further declines of white sharks in these areas. And that's gonna be really important knowledge for scientists who are still studying white shark population numbers in South Africa. Wow, okay, a lot for you all to digest there, but 
How cool is that? What do you make of it all then? I know it's something we all thought was probably happening for a little while now, but it's pretty cool to have it scientifically confirmed, right? And with such dramatic footage too. I wanna hear what you all think of this though in the comments. Do you think it's gonna have real bad consequences for white shark numbers in South Africa? Let me know below. Oh yeah, also, if you wanted to check out that evasive behavior that I was talking to you about earlier in the video between turtles and tiger sharks, then make sure you click that video on the end screen and give it a watch. Or you can click on the other video on the end screen to join me in a hypothetical scenario where we take a look at whether Megalodon could survive in today's oceans. Although, as always, if you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel and it's really appreciated by me. And if you're not subscribed to Shark Bites yet, click that big red subscribe button below where you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until then, see you next time.